Welcome to Firestorm Games and another painting tutorial. In this video we'll be showing you how you can paint the great unclean one miniature for your forces of Nurgle. Before we can begin painting our miniature we first of all need to prime it and this is so that all the subsequent layers of paint will adhere to the miniature properly. Now we've started off by painting a primer onto the surface and then we've gone over the top using a Zandri dust spray paint. This is because it gives us that base colour really quickly and really easily. Alternatively, you could apply this paint by hand, but it's a lot quicker to do it with a spray paint. The first step in painting our Great Unclean One is to apply a dry brush of a Shabti Bone across the entirety of the miniature. To dry brush, you'll want to get a small amount of paint on a brush, remove most of the excess onto a spare piece of paper or some tissue, and then lightly drag the brush across the surface of the model. The paint will begin to slowly build up over these raised sections, which really helps to enhance the detail that we have on this miniature. At the moment, the skin tone of our Great Unclean One is a light brown, but we want to get a green colouring instead. So I'm going to be applying a wash of a Thonian camo shade across the entirety of the Great Unclean One's skin. This wash will have a dual effect. First of all, it will flow into all of those recesses, enhancing the shading and also bringing out those details. And secondly, it will also give the skin a greenish hue. With the wash dried, we can now start painting some of the details that we have on our miniature. The first of these being some of the exposed muscles, the tentacles, and also the lips as well. And we want to base coat all these areas using Bugman's Glow. When applying any base layers, I would recommend creating a slightly watered down mixture of paint. Roughly two parts paint to one part water should suffice. Apply this first layer, allow it to dry, and then apply a second layer over the top. This ensures that we have the best coverage possible, without potentially obscuring any details by applying the paint too thickly. The next base layer that I'll be applying to this miniature will be to the exposed intestines and also any other areas of exposed flesh. Now we want to paint these areas using Screamer Pink. The next base coat to apply is of Rakar Flesh. We want to apply this to a number of different areas. These include any areas of bone, exposed fat, teeth, nails, or any of the various maggots that are scattered across the miniature. With the tentacles completed, the next area that I'll be painting will be the horns, and we want to base coat these areas using Dryad Bark. In this next step, I'll be painting the cloth at the back of the Great Unclean One, and for this, I'll be using a base coat of Mournfang Brown. With the non-metallic areas of the miniature tackled, we can now start painting the metallic areas, such as the blade. Now I want to base coat any silver metallic areas using Lead Belcher. Continuing with the metallics, I'll now be base coating all of the bronze areas of this miniature using Balthazar Gold. With all of our base coats completed, we can now start applying some colour to the areas that we've already painted by applying some washes. Now we want to start off by washing over the areas of the exposed fat in those wounds using Cassandori Yellow. This will make these areas very bright and very striking, especially against the green colouring that we already have. In addition to washing over these areas, I'll also be applying the wash to some of the various boils and pustules that are scattered across the miniature. And if you do overspill onto the edges of these open wounds, don't worry, as this will just add to that effect. The next wash that I'll be using is of Seraphim Sepia, and I'll be applying this to the various areas of teeth, maggots, and also the toenails and fingernails as well. The next wash that I'll be applying will be of Coelia Green Shading. We'll be using this to break up the green colouring that we have in the flesh. At the moment it's a very brownish green colouring and by applying this wash to some targeted areas such as some of the boils and also the cracked areas of skin we can really help to make these areas stand out. In this next step, I'll be applying a wash of Caribou Crimson. Now, I'll be applying this to the areas that we painted with Bugman's Glow previously, as well as some of the exposed sores and flesh that we have in various points around this miniature. In addition to targeting this wash around the inside of these exposed flesh areas, you also want to apply the wash around the edges as well to create a sore and damaged effect. This next wash of Agrax O'Shade will be applied to both the horns and also the various metal areas that we have across this miniature. By applying this wash to the areas that we painted with the lead belcher, it will give us a greasy and rusted effect to the metal. The final wash to apply to this miniature, and also the final step in painting this miniature on the whole, is to apply a wash of Drucci Violet to the exposed intestines. And here we have the fully painted Great Unclean One, who you can see I've assembled and also based. You can find a full list of the paints used in this tutorial along with the order that they were used in, in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, do give us your suggestions about what other miniatures you would like to see us quickly paint. 
And finally, the miniature and all of the paints used in this video can be found on the Firestorm Games web store for 10% less than the RRP. And you can find a link to Firestorm Games on the screen now as well as the description below. So a huge thank you from us for watching this video and we'll see you again on Firestorm Games.